Hey there, it's László Mercer, aka The Tinker Dad. Welcome to my home automation slash home networking related channel. In today's video I will showcase you a piece of software that is something that I actually developed. I worked on it really hard for the couple of last weeks and uh, now I feel ready to show it to the general public. So it's an open source piece of software that is uh, well, my contribution to the home automation slash uh, smart home community. So if you're interested, keep on watching the video. Before showcasing the actual software, the actual project, uh, here's some motivation. So if you are running a smart home, chances are you are hosting something like a Raspberry Pi, like an NVR, a couple of other pieces of software, a backup server, whatnot. And at some point you want to monitor those. So yeah, there are already solutions for this and uh, you can wire those solutions to Home Assistant in very different ways, depending on the actual solution. But, um, well, what if you want something that is simple, something that is made actually for Home Assistant and for monitoring? So this was my case. I'm running a lot of containers, Alexi containers, Docker containers. I'm also running Raspberry Pis, file servers, media server, NVR, uh, backup server, uh, some workload server for my personal experiments, you name it. And I want to monitor these. So it's not an easy task. And uh, depending on, uh, well, the, the various operating systems and the various software these are running, it can be quite uh, time consuming to wire those all up to Home Assistant. So my idea was that uh, Home Assistant has this nice feature called MQTT Discovery. Why I can't use it? like uh, many other project use. I mean, you can use MQTT Discovery, for example, with Tasmota-based uh, smart home devices. And as soon as you just uh, connect one to your network, Home Assistant recognizes it and you can use its sensors. So my idea was that um, I should be able to do something similar, but instead for actual physical devices, I could use this for containers, Linux servers, Raspberry Pis, you name it. So this is how this project was born. And now I'm giving you the project that I called Sensible. Ugh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a crappy name. I got that. Help me find a new one. Okay, so here we go. As I mentioned before, Sensible is an open source project. So naturally it has a GitHub page where you can find all the source code, documentation, releases, whatnot. So currently uh, the source code is available and uh, I'm also heavily focused on writing documentation and uh, there is a list of features that are still missing. So uh, this page in general should give you an overview of uh, what is possible with Sensible, what is Sensible, how does it work and so on. But uh, obviously I just don't want to direct you to the GitHub page, but instead I will explain it in a second. Also there's the first, let's call it pre-release, available for download. Here we go, it has the release notes and as you can see this section describes there are uh, things that are still not working but anyway um, this is something that you can already try and of course you can browse the source code and check it out for yourself. Okay so let me show you how in practice Sensible works, what does it do and how you can use it. First of all a quick demo. Basically, every running installation of Sensible gives you a standalone device within Home Assistant that fully follows the MQTT discovery standards. So I just click this device here, and as I can see, or as we can see, it's a normal device, it has the MQTT info and so on. But most importantly, it has these sensors. Now, these are just a few example sensors I've set up. Uh, for this demonstration, for this showcase, but uh, you can uh, uh, tailor this to your own needs. I will show you later on how. Okay, the next logical question is, uh, where do I set up or how do I set up Sensible to give you, to give us these uh, sensor values, where these values are coming from? Long story short, I have a running Docker container and Sensible is sitting inside that container and these values are provided by that installation of Sensible. 
but let's not get uh, ahead of ourselves just let me talk about a little bit how does sensible work under the hood so what is sensible from a technical point of view well technically sensible is a tiny binary program that you can run pretty much everywhere right now only linux is supported but in the future i plan to support windows and uh, as soon as i get my hands on some mac os based hardware then uh, yeah on mac as well so the point is sensible is designed to be that tiny that you can squeeze it into a docker container uh, a container that runs your existing stuff and uh, you shouldn't even notice its presence so it shouldn't be hogging up memory or something like that. For that purpose, I, de I decided to write it in uh, the Go language, which is multi-platform and uh, easily portable. It's not like a Java-based program or something like that, where you need to install an enormous framework just to make your program run. So it's, it's again, as I mentioned, tiny and uh, multi-platform. So I have a Docker-based example here. So this is just a container running uh, Nginx. And uh, as you can see this Docker file, I just uh, copy a few scripts that are needed for Sensible to run and the Sensible binary itself into the Docker container. Okay, I have to admit that this might sound intimidating for those who don't uh, create Docker containers on their own, but just uh, do use Docker uh, containers created by others. But uh, trust me, it is quite easy to accomplish. Uh, also in the documentation, we have uh, this uh, section about examples. And one of these is how you can uh, uh, plug uh, Sensible into a third party Docker container or even run it inside an Alexi container and so on. So this section is still under development and uh, I'm not saying quite empty, but you get it. But the point is uh, that uh, I'm uh, planning to create a step-by-step -step foolproof guide for uh, just uh, how to use it. Okay, back to the basic functionality of Sensible. So, as I mentioned, there's a binary which runs everything, but you will also need a configuration file and some scripts. The scripts are basically the sensors. These are just very small scripts that return a simple value. And uh, because the flexibility of Linux shell scripting, you can just pretty much do anything with these. So let me show you a quick example. Normally on Linux, wherever it is, whenever it is inside the Docker container or on a normal Linux host, there should be a folder called slash etc slash sensible where sensible stuff are just let's take a peek here's the configuration file setting.yaml and there's this uh, scripts folder okay let's take a look inside the settings yaml file okay point is uh, this is uh, all of the configuration that sensible needs so obviously it has configuration for mqtt your um, a broker host port username password and the client id the usual mqtt stuff also it has some settings for mqtt discovery like the device name uh, this is the device name that appears in home assistant here as you can see sensible dash one there we go and then the prefix which is uh, normally home assistant but the point is that it should match the same configuration value of home assistant okay now the plugins these are basically your sensor definitions so as you can see these are pretty simple entries sensible heartbeat and so on okay i will talk about the heartbeat later on so let's just uh, let's see this one for example sensible root disk free this is the sensor value that you can see here so it gives you the free the amount of free space available on the root disk in gigabytes in this case basically you have a sensor id 
which will be used by home assistant you have a kind definition i will talk about this later but basically there are two kinds of sensor internal which is uh, uh, implemented in uh, golang and part of the implementation of the binary and then the script sensors which are basically your own sensors so it has the script which is the file name of the script file located uh, under the script folder and uh, it has an icon this is the icon that is picked up on home assistant here okay and basically that's it and of course you have a human readable name so as you can see this configuration is quite simple and this uh, will assume that uh, there's a this is a single value sensor right now only these uh, this type of sensor is supported so it will assume that uh, that uh, the script you implement will write a single value uh, to the standard output and so they will pick it up and uh, send it to home assistant via mqtt discovery so these example scripts are located in the a source code of sensible under the folder examples scripts these are basically just this is just basically copied into the slash sensible slash script folder okay so here we have this root free dot sh as you can see this is really a one-liner basically it uses uh, the df uh, command that uh, returns it um, in a human readable way and basically with a little bit of uh, text processing magic in linux uh, using tail and, and oak uh, i just get that simple value out of it so yes to implement um, uh, this type of sensor uh, you need to have some experience with uh, shell scripting in linux but again it's nothing serious and in the future i plan to have a ton of different scripts available now, in the next section of the video, I will show you how to create a simple sensor using these scripts and the configuration file. So, if you have um, uh, Sensible installed on your system, or actually using Sensible because we're not really talking about an installation process at the moment, then you should have a configuration file under slash etc slash Sensible. So, this is the path and this should be the name of the configuration file. First, you have to add a new entry for your script. So, let's just copy this one. There we go. Let's call it hostname script sensor ID. Let's call it hostname again. And the script should be called hostname as well. Also, we can choose a different icon this uh, list the list of icons is available within home assistant when you are configuring a sensor on the lovely ui okay so this is the configuration that you need now we save this and then we need to create a script so i have these uh, example scripts here i copy one of them The executable permissions permission is all right so we are just we have just to edit the script and let's use a different comment let's say hostname dash f this returns the full host name okay so if you want to try it you can just do like there we go, this is what we should see as the sensor value. Now we have to start uh, Sensible and this should appear in Home Assistant. Normally if you are running uh, Sensible just like this, uh, you won't have too much output because uh, it writes a log file under slash var slash log. Okay, so let's just uh, check our device in Home Assistant. 
And there we go, we have the host name there. Okay, now let's put it in the Lovelace UI. This is where you can choose a different icon. I think this is the easiest way. And you can actually put this into your configuration file. So we go back to here. I stop sensible. I did the configuration file. There we go. Now I just restart Sensible. Right now Sensible is just running as any other program. Obviously this is not how you want to run uh, it on a Linux server. You want to have it as a as a systemd service or something like that or even start automatically in some basic way uh, when you log in or something like that so obviously if i close this connection this will go down and the sensors values won't be uh, updated anymore so i go back to home assistant and now i can see that host name has this icon pretty cool huh and this is it. Now you can see how easy it is to create a sensor based on a script using Sensible and add it to Home Assistant. Honestly, this is all I wanted to show in this video. I understand that uh, this might be confusing and this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, but please bear with me. I wanted to have this video more like a showcase of a project I'm heavily working on. And uh, of course you can expect an updated documentation on github and i will also publish video tutorials on this channel regarding sensible so what do you think about sensible as i mentioned in the video it's really 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 far from finished so i understand there are concerns like security and there are missing features and whatnot so this is right now the right time for you to um, make an effect on or have an effect on the development so you can use the comment section so section of this video or you can use github uh, where you can raise issues and uh, ask about features or development roadmap or whatever you have in mind you can also contact me via social media at this point i can make drastic changes to the project because the code base is relatively small but the, the core of the functionality is already there you can download it, you can try it, you can even open pull request for it and so on. So, right now this is something I'm really trying to um, get into better shape to say so. And um, I really like this project, I really have a lot of actual practical use for it. So it's not something that I started working on and will drop in two months or something like that. Unless someone says that... Uh, there's an out-of-the-box solution with the very similar constraints, very similar goals. And, um, well, in that case, I can just use that and, well, last, let Sensible rest in peace. But let's hope that not happen, will not happen. Okay, anyway, this video was long enough. Thanks for watching it. And if you're interested in Sensible and haven't subscribed to the channel, or you just like my content in general, please subscribe to the channel. That helps me a lot. And yeah, uh, you can be notified when I upload a new video, maybe about Sensible, maybe about other stuff. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching this and hope to see you next week, next time with a new video. Bye.